so he said no one's really doing anything but clearly you are and your your actions are having an implication with your vendors right yeah um, i i i mean but it's not one of those things that we we tell them okay you got to be systematic you know it's not a it's I, I but i think it's important somehow as a as a business yeah like like us who is not direct it doesn't have a direct impact right to, yeah. to have that consciousness i think I think my, my, my perspective on this, and I, I think we're not, we're not there yet, is that you, know, you, you can broadly categorize businesses into kind of three buckets today, right? You've got, you've got, some, you've got some businesses which clearly are having a negative impact on sustainability because they are, in, let's say it's tobacco, it's impacting health, right? Or it's fossil fuel, it's, it's contributing to, the, to, to carbon emissions. Um, or they are using slave labor, right? And and you see evidence around, it, including the industry I come from, like real estate. You know, just uh, you know, sixty thousand kids living living on construction sites in Thailand, um, actually living on the construction sites, right? It's most de- well, incredibly dangerous, you know. And so, so you, you have you have companies who today are causing harm. Uh, somehow on people and planet, right? There's a, there's a bucket there. There's a bucket of businesses which, first and foremost, their business is not around sustainability. Their business is around searching for video content or it's around, you know, um, um, providing, you know, financial services to, to middle class um, and, and helping them with investments or whatever. So they have, they have, another, they have, a, they have a, a, a key focus, which is something else. And then you have a whole bunch of a whole bunch of businesses which, which you know three years ago I saw I see five or six pitch decks a week, um, and three years ago four years ago I would see zero sustainability focus ones. Now I see about two or three of those five or six, which you know are first and foremost focused around sustainability, and that's a, that's a probably a combination of what's changing in the market, but as well as you know me being dialed into it more. Um, but I'm very, very, opt- I'm very, very uh, optimistic and pleased by that change. You know, where companies are talking about SDGs and how they can support the UN sustainability goals, or focus on one or two of those particular areas. But you've got those three buckets. Now, today, if you are in the second bucket, you know, um, like you've just described, Alex, uh, which is, you know, you're focused on searching video content or searching for conversations in video content, um, or what or voice. Um, why should you care about it? Um, and today, if you care about it versus not care about it, it's probably not going to have a huge amount of impact. But in a not too distant future, and you're already seeing, I'm already seeing it already, um, there, there are different pressures exerting. So there are pressures from government, uh, regulations being made, uh, and policies being made, and commitments being made um, around net zero and cut, being carbon neutral, and policies, and grants, and tax incentives, or even you know tax against you know carbon heavy industries and so you know, the rise of carbon tax um so you're seeing governments do things you're seeing um en- enterprises do things you know ikea for example making decisions for the whole of their supply chain around you know environmental social and governance practice and if you're a small sme sitting in asia today it's not going to impact you but at some point you know you're part of the supply chain for ikea Suddenly, IKEA is going to say, we're no longer part of the supply chain anymore. Some of that SME in in Asia loses its largest client. And they don't know why. Because they haven't woken up to this thing called, you know, E, S or G or all three of them. Um, And so you've got enterprises making decisions. You've got consumers making decisions, not just in terms of how they invest their money, but also increasingly, you know, um, consumers who are employees deciding, okay, I want to work for a company that's purposeful. If you start talking, you know, so one of the hardest challenges for a startup is getting talent, acquiring and retaining talent. Increasingly, consumers will be choosing companies and are choosing companies which are purpose driven. If you can talk about the work you're doing around, you know, trying to think about, you know, how you manage your suppliers uh, better from a from a social or governance or environmental point of view, or how you're making decisions around energy consumption, you know, you're working with a, one of the one of the solar providers. You know, like Sunset, you power, they're powering all of your, your kit, for example, um, then, then certain people will want to work for your company. Um, and so you'll be able to attract and retain talent better. Um, and then it's all the cost of capital. I mean, again, it's still early stages, but, you know, you're starting to see the rise of um, uh, sustainable finance and, and, and green bonds and green loans. Uh, and companies will get access to lower cost of capital or get access to investors who care about it. 
Um, you know, if I think about the, the VC I help, Wavemaker, in a year ago, you know, it was a struggle for me to get them to even talk about sustainability. Now, you know, we're talking about building a sustainability uh, so an impact fund. Um, we've done mapping of the whole of the portfolio around SDGs. We've got our LPs like IFC saying, actually, you, every single one of your portfolio companies has to fill in, you know, this um, ESG report and disclosure. Um, so you're starting to see this pressure building from an investment point of view, from a supplier, customer point of view, from a talent point of view, um, and from a government point of view. 